Greetings to you. This is Brother James Muhammad, a student in the ministry of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the Nation of Islam, coming to you live once again for yet another segment of Closing the Gap, the show purposed for closing, bridging, and ultimately eradicating gaps, particularly those that exist in the black community and in the communities of the people of color. And I make no ex, uh, apology for our focus on our own people, but ultimately to close the gaps between man and man, woman and woman that exists in the human family of the planet Earth. For those of you who have been listening regularly, I want to thank you. And as you well know, we always begin our shows with expressions of gratitude for those who have made their contribution for us to be here today. We first and foremost thank Almighty God, Allah. And we say, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful the one God to whom all praises do the Lord of the worlds. We thank Almighty God Allah for his merciful and prophetic in intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, the great Mahdi. And we thank him for raising up from our midst his Messiah, the exalted Christ, the one whom the world has been awaiting and expecting for the past 2,000 years. I speak of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, through whom we have been given our beloved and blessed Redeemer, my teacher, my leader, my guide, my inspiration, really my Redeemer, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. In those names, I'm very happy to greet all of you with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. I want to thank our dear brother and CEO of In Touch News Radio, Brother Darrell Johnson. For this wonderful opportunity he has extended to us, this wonderful platform and forum through which we can share some of the life-giving, life-saving message of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So I'm very grateful to him. Once again, we are accompanied by our brother, our engineer, who's handling all of what we need to be handled so that we can come to you streaming live. Brother Esteban, who sitting right before me, I just want to publicly express my appreciation for my brother. Now, as you well know, those of you who have been listening, our shows are premised upon our broadcasts are really founded upon the teachings and message of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad as they have been and are being expressed by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And so I'd like to continue on in that fine tradition. I want to start first, though, first though with some words of recognition and thanks to Allah, God, for our dear sister who has recently transitioned, recently passed, our sister, Toni Morrison. I really did not pay the kind of attention and the kind of astuteness and really the kind of responsibility that I should have to know more about her, to read more of her writings. But she was and is a gift from Almighty God and one that we should study. 
The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that when a person is living, they are writing their testament. And as they write their testament and are among us, there's so many distractions that do not permit us to go deeply into the person and to try to appreciate their value. We are busy living our own lives and writing our own testament. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says when a person transitions from this life and her physical or his physical person is no longer with us, then there's a period to that testament and then their lives are open for study. For study. I am going to correct my shortfall in that area and begin to study more of our sister as she has left a rich legacy for all of us as black people and, of course, black women, but for all human beings. I want to read an excerpt from an article that was written in the Final Call newspaper. This is the official organ of the Nation of Islam. In the latest Final Call newspaper, you see it, headlined Ferguson five years later. And of course, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's message, which we will be reading in this show, is titled, Justice is the Joy of Freedom. The Final Call newspaper. I also want to bring to our attention In Touch News magazine, a powerful magazine uh, that is edited by and published by, rather, our brother and CEO, again, Brother Daryl Johnson. And I want to invite all of us who can to attend the Powers or the Power Couples Ball 2019. Saturday, September 21st, 2019. Get your copy of In Touch News and make it to the Power Ball or Power Couples Ball. Now, let us continue with this excerpt of an article written by our dear sister. Wow, I lost the page. Here it is. Our dear sister, who is a staff writer of the Final Call newspaper, Sister Nisa Islam Muhammad. And it is titled, Tony Morrison, An Unapologetic Literary Prophet. Like countless college undergrads, she writes, Halila Watson at the time, discovered Toni Morrison in an English class and her life was never the same. Quote, she saved me from indecision and gave me a new source of inspiration. The writing spoke to me. They've always spoken to me. She wrote Song of Solomon after her father died. It's full of racism, sexism, materialism, and nationalism, the four impediments that don't allow us to fully develop. She brings these to the forefront. She's not trying to be a Faulkner. She's not trying to be a Tolstoy. She's not trying to be anyone but herself, she told the final call. Years later, and a Ph.D. in English, thanks to inspiration from Toni Morrison, Dr. Khalila Watson Muhammad is now a lifetime member of the Toni Morrison Society and teaches her works in women's literature, English 101, and freshman composition at the Olive Harvey College in Chicago as an assistant professor. And so we thank Almighty God Allah for our dear sister Toni Morrison. We will benefit 
from her writings, her life, the lessons that her life has taught us. And by the grace of God, we will learn the lesson of history. And specifically and particularly, that lesson is flowers while you live. It means to appreciate people when they are among us and not wait for them to pass and then express our love, our gratitude, uh, or our sentiments as we oftentimes do at funerals. But let us give flowers while we live. In the deeper sense, it means value all life, particularly that life or those lives that Almighty God Allah allows to come into our lives and have great impact, influence, giving us inspiration and guidance and testing us and trying us. Thank Allah for all of those lives that contribute to what we are today, where we are today. And now, let us get into the main um, articles that will comprise this show this afternoon. But before I do, uh, there's another announcement that I just want to make sure I address. Today, under the guidance of the local representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the laboring staff of Tampa Study Group, we're very happy to announce that we are sponsoring, it's going on right now as a matter of fact, and we are sponsoring a Saturday, um, I'm sorry, a Tampa Study Group invites you to our back to school event. Saturday, August 17th, the start time is 1 p.m. We are well into it. We're offering free haircuts for the first 25 boys, and he's still cutting hair. Our dear brother, student minister, Chad, he's still cutting the young brothers' hair. Their drinks and refreshments, math and science games, lots of surprises, music, and more. Backpacks are being given away so come on and share this back-to-school event with us. We are at North 50th Street or 5508 North 50th Street, right off of Hillsborough Avenue in Suite 32. And if you're in the area, come on and bring your children and let us give back to the community and offer to our young people school supplies and inspiration and encouragement as they enter into their new school year. Thank you for allowing me that announcement, and now let us begin. You know, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, not being a prophet, he would never called himself or declared that he himself was a prophet. However, he was definitely blessed with the gift of prophecy. I'm going to read an article that was written by him in 1973. It, is a, it appears in that illuminous and illuminating book, The Fall of America, authored by the same the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The title of the article is, Is Modern America as Merciless as Ancient Nineveh? And for those of you who are listening, you can join the discussion by calling 813-444-9588. Once again, that's 813-444-9588. 8, 8. You can also uh, stream live with us or view it as it is streaming live at intouchnews.com on your website or on your internet and on Facebook Live. We welcome, of course, your comments, your questions, 
and your critique. I'd like to hear from you. Now let us continue with the article of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It begins, Woe to the bloody city. This is a scripture out of the Bible. And we quote, Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. This is from Nahum, the book of Nahum, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad writes, America answers this prophecy of the ruins of ancient Nineveh. Nineveh was full of lies and robbery. So is America. The prey departeth not. The poor so-called Negroes in America are the prey, and they refuse to depart from America regardless of the evil treatment they receive. Though the whips and the clubs of their enemy are heard night and day upon the heads and backs of the prey, so-called Negroes, they still do not desire to depart from America. Ancient Nineveh, he continues, according to her history, was full of chariots that made much noise and the prancing of horses carrying the chariots in full speed that the prophets described them as jumping chariots. So it is in America today. Her cities are filled with automobiles and the noise of them is heard every hour of the day rattling past our doors. She is full of blood from murder from murdered people. She also fills another prophecy made in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 12, which reads, quote, Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establish a city by iniquity. Now, we cannot deny the inarguable, irrefutable historic facts and proof that this country, America, was founded on the blood of the Native American, on the blood of the so-called Africans who were kidnapped from their native land and people and brought here to serve in abject uh, servitude, chattel slavery. She's full of blood murdered uh, from murdered people. America was founded and built with blood and established by iniquity. She killed the aboriginal inhabitants, the Indians, to establish herself or as an independent people at the great loss of lives of the original owners. Her great progress has been made by the work of iniquity. She has robbed and continues to rob many people and the blood of her slaves, the so-called Negroes, has stained the earth here and elsewhere slain by her hands. I was listening to a newscast by one of the representatives of CNN, the guest that he had on, Stated they were arguing about Trump's position on immigration and his bigotry and his separatistness and his white supremacistness, if that's a word, his white nationalism. Hmm? And the guest there, as an argument, said that America as a nation was founded by immigrants. Immigrants are the foundation of America. I understand that statement. Many immigrants were involved 
in the building of America. That is an inarguable and irrefutable fact. But the foundation of the wealth and greatness, material greatness of America is as a result of her slaves, the American so-called Negro and their descendants. For we were brought here from our native land and people against our will, packed on ships like sardines, many of whom over the transatlantic trade experience died or were murdered or committed suicide. I'll just say to the tune of a hundred million we lost in what is referred to as the Middle Passage. Then we were deposited brutally here on the shores of America and then for 250 years made to work for nothing. For nothing. I want to repeat that. For nothing. No compensation, no remuneration, no reward. Just work. For as our older folks say, from can't see morning to can't see night. And then beaten, hung, lynched, castrated, raped, and destroyed if we showed any kind of opposition against our tormentors. Now, you can imagine, if I had a company with just 25 employees, and those 25 employees worked for me for free, for free, and the profits that were realized as a result of the work that they produced went into my pockets, and all I gave them was the very minimal just to keep them alive long enough to do more work. But I'm not finished. Then their children and their children's children were sold and met to the same torment, the same torture, the same slavery, and the company. Now the 25 and their children and their children's children, I had the benefit of reaping the reward of their work. Well, that's just 25 people. And not for one year, not for 10 years, not for 20 years, but for 250 plus years, I had 25 people and their descendants working for me and I reaped the benefit the reward from their uh, production of the products that they produced. I think I'd be pretty wealthy. In fact, I know I would. Now, I want you to think about having millions, millions working for you like that over a 250-year period. I'm sorry, I cannot agree with that guest. I forgot who he was, but I cannot agree that immigrants are the foundation of America. No, the foundation of America are black slaves from so-called Africa, the enslaved, the indigenous people, the Native American. Trump needs to, to consider that. In fact, all of those whites that support and follow Trump. They should consider. Don't be so quick to say, send the immigrants home or block them from coming in. What if the Native American told you that when you showed up? You were an immigrant to this country and you still are. I don't care how naturalized you have become. Yes, you are a citizen and yes, you are in positions of rulership and leadership. But at the base of it all, you are an immigrant because you forced yourself on the Native American, murdered them in mass and stole their land and then spirited them off 
and cornered them off into these what you call reservations. You got a lot to answer for, America. You got a lot to answer for. Let's continue. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad states, the lawless people kill their own leaders and assassinate their rulers. Anyone who opens his mouth for justice for the poor prey, the so-called Negroes, is seized, prosecuted, and in many cases slain because he dared to open his mouth for the oppressed against the oppressors. Woe to America. She has established a government with blood. The murderers seek to kill the innocent all the day long, regardless of the people's choice of a ruler. If chosen, he should be obeyed and given a chance to serve the people until that people dispossess him for another. It is very evil, he writes, very shameful and savage in these enlightened days of education and science for America to be charged with killing her rulers and great men of wisdom and science without due process. There is no justice for us, the so-called Negroes, in a government whose citizens are free to kill until satisfied and then turn upon their rulers and slay them. What chance have we under the rule of such people? We live under the very shadow of death all the day long. The assassinated President Abraham Lincoln by John W. Booth in Washington, D.C., April 14, 1865, who died April 15, 1865, was successful in freeing our parents from servitude slavery to weaken the slave master's strength against the federal government. For this he paid with his life. Now, I want to just make a note here. He did issue an edict called the Emancipation Proclamation, which declared that the so-called Negro was free. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us that emancipation is not freedom. Freedom is freedom. Emancipation, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us, is a uh, Latin word from the root eman kippera, which means that you are free from my direct control of my hand, but you are not free from the purview of my power. So emancipation is not freedom. Freedom is freedom. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad continues, President James A. Garfield, assassinated by Charles J. Guteau, July 2, 1881, in Washington, D.C., and died September 19, 1881. President William McKinley shot September 6, 1901, in Buffalo, New York, by Leon Zolk. Zolkozy or Sizolkozy and died September 14, 1901. President John F. Kennedy assassinated November 22, 1963, in Dallas, Texas, by the accused assassin Leon or Lee Harvey Oswald and died minutes later. All four of these presidents were known to have spoken and acted sympathetically towards the so-called Negroes, and they paid with their lives for doing so. There are others who had attempts made upon their lives. Mr. Huey P. Long, a U.S. Senator of Louisiana, was shot September 18, 1935 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana by Dr. Carl A. Weiss and died September 19, 1935. Mr. Long preached, share the wealth, and for this he paid with his life. 
There is no justice for the poor. I'm going to hold that point as we go into a commercial. We'll be right back. Remember, you can join the discussion at 813-444-9588. You've been listening to Closing the Gap. We'll be right back. Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. I got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college. You know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity. And to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing. And it was all thanks to Bright Futures. Florida has created more than 1 million jobs in only five years, and a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures Scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. Because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowers Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. One darn second. America since 2017 is suffering from a serious hiccup. 9-11 is seriously overused in a distasteful manner. Every day the cops are calling on an innocent, innocent person of color. It amazes me that America has come down to this. A person of color becomes a person of interest. Waffle House, the dorm, Starbucks is a few. This is not the lunch counters, sit-ins of the 1960s. 2019, harassed simply for being black and proud. Hold on one darn second. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. Pre-order my new book, Motivational Moments, at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. listening and viewing audience we're back and if you've just joined us we are reading from the illuminating article of the most honorable elijah muhammad found in the latest final call newspaper entitled is modern america as merciless as ancient nineveh again you can join the discussion if you so desire by calling 813-444-9585 Eight, eight. Let's continue. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad writes, There is no justice for the poor, the so-called Negroes in America, as long as they are subjects under the American flag. A great attempt is now being made on the poor. Laws found so-called Negroes to deceive them by making false friendship and the passage of civil rights bills at the time of the writing, and forcing themselves to accept the lost found so-called Negroes into their social equality. This is only a trap for us. To accept it will make us enemies of God and our black people of Africa and Asia who are our true friends. It would be totally ignorant on our part to be swept away to our doom by accepting these maelstrom promises of social equality temptations. Our ignorant masses cannot be trusted under the charms or temptations of the unalike. But in the end, you will regret your actions as we are currently regretting them now. If America wants us or wants to offer us a better side of her, why not offer something of permanent good, such as a portion of the country, a few states for our ever-increasing population? Will the white man fool himself in continuously making promises to us that he knows he cannot fulfill? He has his own problems of unemployment. 
with the ever-increasing unemployed of his own kind, fleeing from Asia and Africa, plus the loss of far foreign trade. Can we hope for him to care for us and our children forever? No. We need a place on this earth that we can call our own. Go to work and produce our own needs, and this will provide us with employment for our unemployed. Let no man deceive you, he concludes. We are face to face with a change of the worlds. Once again, this is an excerpt from the illuminating book, The Fall of America, printed 1973. That was 46 years ago. But it reads like it could have been penned just yesterday with the mass killings, the mass murders, the overarching bigotry and racism emanating from the top spot of our country, the president himself, who has made it clear he has no love for the people of color here in America, naturalized citizens, born in America or born elsewhere, it doesn't matter. He has no love for the people of color anywhere in the earth. Those were the words and are the words of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, written 46 years ago, but oh so relevant today. We want to move on now to the words of his top student, the national representative of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the man who sits in the seat of leadership of the nation of Islam by the permission and ordinance of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, our teacher, my teacher, our redeemer, our beloved and blessed extension of Allah's grace the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I just get excited when I even call his name. This article contains excerpts from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's address delivered uh, Saturday, November 20th, 2010 at the Coronado Performing Arts Theater in Rock Illinois. To order this message in its entirety on CD, DVD, and MP3, visit store.finalcall.com or call 1-866-602-1230. Now let us begin the message of the most honorable minister, Louis it is titled, Justice is the Joy of Freedom. The name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All human beings desire to be free. In fact, every creature that Almighty God Allah created, he frees that creature from that which bounded it in its formation and brings it forth into the light of this marvelous universe. He has provided for each creature that he created a means to sustain and maintain its life, to reproduce its life, that that species may continue on our planet. The same God freed every one of us from the dark confines of our mother's wombs, brought us forth into his light to be free, to be justified, and to be equal. Every human being wants, to fu wants full and complete freedom. Anything that deprives us of that which God desires for us puts itself in a position opposite of God. Ultimately, every oppressed... Oh, I don't, I, let me stop right there. I couldn't help reflecting on the religious institutions and the faith expressions of the world that put their stamp of approval on the transatlantic slave 
experience. The Pope and the Catholic Church included. They may be speaking against it today, but they had their hand in it and put their um, approval on it. Ultimately, every oppressed people, every enslaved people, every people, everyone who takes the role of the oppressor, the enslaver, the exploiter, is ultimately set down. Now, if you're following the news, you see the people rising up against their leadership all over the world, most currently in um Hong Kong, in Puerto Rico, all over the world. There's a natural rising up of the masses of the people against oppressive government. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that oppression breeds revolt. That's the natural production or product of oppression. And we have been oppressed here and continue to be oppressed here in America going on 500 years. What kind of revolt can you expect? Well, let's continue. Nations rise, nations fall. Empires rise and empires fall. We have not seen anything in the last 6,000 years that has had permanence. So God, at the end of this present world, promises to set up a kingdom on the earth, not for some, but for all. That kingdom will not have any end to it because it is rooted in the same universal principles upon which the universe itself is founded. The principle of fair dealing. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, our teacher, taught us that justice lies down with you when you lay down at night. Justice rises up when you wake up in the morning. Regardless to what happens in man's courts of law, there are higher courts or there is a higher law, a higher balance. Even when we think we have cheated justice with unjust judges and unjust decisions, all of those decisions and judges are at the same time being judged. I want to stop right here, and I'm asking those in the hierarchy of the judiciary here in America and anywhere in the world who have handed down unjust, imbalanced decisions based on ethnicity, based on race, based on class, based on wealth, or the lack thereof. You're being judged today. From the Supreme Court all the way down to the local judges, you're being judged today by the judge of us all. Almighty God, Allah. You may think that you have gotten away because in your corrupt behavior, somebody slid you some money or somebody promised you a seat of power or some other kind of promise that you corrupt the process of fair dealing, the process of administering justice to the benefit of yourself and to those who manipulate you. You may think you've gotten away, but nobody gets away. And that you shall soon see. In fact, you're experiencing now, experiencing it now. No one gets out of this life without paying, regardless to what we do to create what looks like justice, though it may not be justice at all. So, what is justice, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan asks? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that justice is the principle of fair dealing. According to Webster's Dictionary, justice is fairness, fair play, fair-mindedness, Justice is even-handedness, impartiality, objectivity. It is a lack of bias, a lack of prejudice. What a wonderful world this would be if we lived under fair dealing. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that justice is the law that distinguishes between right and wrong, 
The balance is in each of us from our creator. Nobody has to tell you that you're doing wrong because somehow nature tells us. Very beautiful principle. Think about the word weapon. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that justice is the weapon that God will use in the judgment of this present world. That's an interesting statement. How is justice being used as a weapon? And what is the definition of a weapon? According to Webster, a weapon is defined as any instrument or device for use in attack or defense in combat, fighting or war, as a sword or rifle or cannon, anything used against an opponent, adversary or victim. Zoologically speaking, any part of or organ serving for attack or defense as claws, horns, teeth, or stingers, etc. Now, isn't that interesting? Justice is going to be used by Allah as a weapon. Well, let's get some understanding of that, and we will as we continue to read the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But how does justice become a weapon, he asks. Jesus said, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, the same shall he also reap. Just think about that for a moment. America, you think about that for a moment. Do you really think you're getting away with the consequences of the deaths of hundreds of millions of, of indigenous people, hundreds of millions of so-called African? Do you really think you're getting away? You corrupt and bestial and brutal police who murder our people, our young people and old people. Our men, women, and children outside of the law of justice and your brother judge tells you you're acquitted of such consequence of the act. Now, you may think that you were exonerated. You may think that you have escaped the law of justice, but no, you can't mock God. What For whatsoever a man soweth, the same shall he also reap. Be careful. It's reaping time. Just think about that for a moment. Then the scripture teaches, as thou hast done, so shall it be done unto thee. Now, that's justice as a weapon. Jesus again said, sow the wind and you'll reap the whirlwind. So just like you sow a seed and get back so much more than what you put in. In the day of justice and judgment, the wicked will get back more based on what they've done. Scripture teaches us he will pluck them up and leave them neither root nor branch. So that means that the things that we do, we're going to have, have to give an account of it. I want us to think about that. Scripture, though, Allah God will pluck us up, the wicked, that is, and leave them neither root nor branch. Now, we heard the white nationalists in Charlottesville. We heard them say, you will not replace us. It appears to me that they are afraid of being genetically annihilated. Genetically annihilated. We don't have anything to do with that, not black people. Well, we do in the sense that if you cohabit with a black person, I don't care how white you are, your offspring will no longer be white. Your offspring will be black. Now, for those of you who like to integrate with white uh, men and or black men and Black women, I mean, I can understand how love conquers all. Love 
overcomes all if it's real love. But you know, if you really want to stay here as your ranks, your mortality rate is increasing drastically, if you really want to be around for a little while, leave our women alone. And white women, leave our men alone. You say, Brother James, how can you talk like that? You sound like President Trump. Oh, please. Look, everything in nature seeks its own. Everything in nature is more comfortable with its own. That doesn't mean that when people of their own kind are gathering together, living together, working together, producing together, um, pursuing their faith together, it doesn't mean that they hate everybody else. It just means that they recognize their common sameness, their cultural sameness, their genetic sameness. That doesn't mean that they hate everyone else. That's how the broader society of whites interpret it because they know how they feel when they deprive us of moving into their neighborhoods or keeping us away from where they are. It is hatred that makes them do that. Not love of each other because they kill each other as America's wars and the world wars that they have engaged in historically proves beyond the shadow of a doubt. It is not that they love each other so much, but they most definitely hate the people of color. Let me continue. The scripture says that he will leave them neither root. God, I'm talking about, leave them neither root nor branch. See, it's one thing to, de to destroy the branch of a tree. The branch will draw nurturing and nourishment from the root of the tree, and the nourishment and nurturing from the root will permit the branch to grow again. So it ain't about eliminating just the branch. Allah, God says in the scriptures, and this is the Bible, not the Quran, the Bible, says he will leave them neither root nor branch. Well, if you don't leave a root, there's no root to nourish the branch. And if there's no root to nourish the branch, that means you're out of here. Pardon my colloquialism. Ultimately, you're out of here. Let's continue. Sometimes, the minister writes, if you're a good person, you can set good for your children. And sometimes when you're an evil person, you can set evil for your offspring. This is why the scripture teaches prepare slaughter this is a very delicate statement, but I'm going to read it anyway. Prepare slaughter for the children for the iniquities of their fathers. Are your children being slaughtered today in mass? Are our children being slaughtered today in mass? Hmm? America has suffered a mass killing every day for the last couple of months a shooting, averaging a shooting every day for the last six months, a shooting every day, a seemingly meaningless killing, destruction of seemingly innocent people every day. Why is God permitting this? Don't get upset with me for making a note of this. I'm not judging anybody. Nor am I declaring the punishment of God based on what is happening. I do not know what is in God's mind, nor do you. But God is not mocked. As a man soweth, so shall you reap. Let's continue. 
Again, prepare slaughter for the children for the iniquities of their fathers. So each of us, as we run this race called life, we are making it either good for ourselves and our progeny or bad for them. So no matter how long you live, the best way to live is to live right. I'm going to put a pin in this reading of the article. We'll continue next week. We will always draw from the words of our teacher, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and we bring these words to our people, whoever will listen, whoever will have ear, let them listen. Sometimes truth is very difficult to digest. But you know, it's like medicine. Oftentimes, medicine won't taste good to the palate, but it'll do the work of curing what ails you. Sometimes truth is like that. Now, dear family, those of you who are listening, just a word of caution, a word of advice, don't live as if you're living under a rock with your head in the sand. Look at the current events, as heinous as they are, as painful as they are to witness or to talk about. Look at them, study them, and then compare them to the words of prophecy found in both the Bible and the Quran. We must begin to look at why Allah God is permitting all of this murder, all of this suffering, all of this evil. We have got to understand better that all of what is taking place is in the line of prophecy. So we close this show today with a word of caution and advice. Study. The scripture says study to show thyself approved, but study. The ignorant won't make it today. Study. Thank you for listening. But before we close out, I have a couple of announcements that I'd like to make. We've got a couple of more minutes. I want to ask those of you who have been tuning in, who have been listening for your support. We thank Almighty God Allah for our brother, uh, Daryl Johnson, for extending to us this opportunity. However, there is, of course, and naturally so, and justifiably so, there is a financial component and responsibility to this. So for those of you who enjoy what you've heard or have been edified by one of the shows and what was said on the show, you can show your support by going to PayPal at jkingdom1, the number one, at aol.com. Once again, that's PayPal, jkingdom1, at aol.com, and PayPal, region7helper.jm, at gmail.com. And for Cash App, you can go to jm7, the number seven, region want to show your support, and we certainly appreciate it, go to those PayPal addresses, go to the Cash App address, and help us to continue to bring the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad to you, his beloved people, and to all who will listen. Thank you again, and may Allah bless us the light of understanding until next week same time same station assalamu alaikum